Diabetes Connections is brought to you by Inhaled Insulin, Glucose Management in the Moment, by Omnipod, Simplify Life with Omnipod 5, and by Dexcom G7, the most accurate CGM system. This is Diabetes Connections with Stacey Sims. This week, Almost all of us have had a hospital or doctor's office finger stick with those really big disposable lancers. They hurt, but there's a reason why they're still in use. And the hospitals, blood banks, any other time that you use these single-use products, what they really want to guard against is having to poke someone twice. Some of the ways in which they accomplish this goal is to make the needle as large and as deep as possible to ensure that you get the blood that you need to do the test. That's Josh Pittman, the CEO of PIP, a company that makes a new kind of much smaller and thinner lancing device. I wanted to talk to Josh because it can't be easy to start a Lancet company in the age of CGM. What's the thinking here and why is he so passionate about these pokers? This podcast is not intended as medical advice. If you have those kinds of questions, please contact your healthcare provider. Welcome to another week of the show. I am always so glad to have you here. I'm your host, Stacey Sims. You know we aim to educate and inspire about diabetes with a focus on people who use insulin. I met the folks at PIP last summer. I was at the ADCES conference in August and I met them, saw their booth. A very sleek look, very pretty colors. They had a great presentation. But as the mom of a kid with type 1 who rarely sticks his finger, I wonder what the relevance of this company really was. So I asked CEO Josh Pittman to come on the show. Now, I know you are wondering how different a Lancet or a Lancer can be. And without doing a sales pitch here, PIP is all in one. So you can use it in a Lancing device, but it really is meant to be used on its own. I'm going to post a link in the show notes so you can see a photo. It's quite small. You never see the needle. It's a very clever device there. I know most of you finger stick more than Benny, you know, even with a CGM. At least I'm honest about him, right? I mean, and we talk about it in the interview because Josh asks me about that. (laughs) Oh my goodness. But before he got a CGM, he was uh, diagnosed at two. He got a CGM at age nine. So for those seven years, we were doing at least 10 sticks every day, at least one overnight. And I would have loved something different, you know, something easier to carry, something where you had to do fewer steps. So Josh was very upfront and honest uh, with me, and I really enjoyed our conversation. Some quick housekeeping. You may remember getting an email about PIP from me earlier this year. As I said in that email, it was a sponsored email, which means they did pay me to write about them. If you're a longtime listener, you know it's important for me to disclose. I don't do anything sponsored that I don't believe in. I mean what I say. But it's really important for me to tell you, right? You want to know this stuff. And they did not pay for this interview. And we did not talk about what we would talk about in advance. They didn't give me questions to ask or anything like that. Just the usual podcast interview. And we'll get to it in just a moment. But first, Diabetes Connections is brought to you by Omnipod 5. You know that I am a big fan of choice when it comes to diabetes technology. I really get excited when there's something new. If you live with diabetes, you deserve to find the best fit for you. And that's just one reason I'm working with Omnipod to help spread the word about what makes it so easy to test their system out. If you want to try an insulin pump or see what life without tubes is all about, you can try Omnipod 5 with no commitment or obligation. You can try Omnipod even if your current tubed pump is in warranty. Really, you heard that right. And if it's not right for you, no problem. Omnipod does not tie you down with a contract or a tube. Go to diabetes-connections.com and click on the Omnipod logo. Terms and conditions apply for full safety risk information and free trial terms and conditions. Visit omnipod.com slash diabetes connections. Josh, welcome to Diabetes Connections. Thanks for joining me and my listeners today. Same. Thanks for having me, Stacey. I uh, look forward to the conversation. Yeah, I'm really glad to have you here. Let's talk a little bit just to start about how you got started here. Why did you decide to start this company? Well, I've been in this industry for about 15 years now, mm-hmm. since 2007. And uh, my first introduction to the industry was uh, working for a mail order, diabetic supply company, uh, primarily selling meters and test strips to individuals on Medicare. I worked for a company called Diabetes Care Club. And so that was my first intro to the industry. But my first introduction to diabetes was as a child, my mom was diagnosed with type 2 
sometime in her uh, late 40s, early 50s. And so I lived with her and, and experienced firsthand some of the some of the challenges that she lived with on a daily basis. But with Pip, how Pip came to be primarily is that through my current company that I'm running now, we sell single use safety land sets to hospitals all over the country. We've been doing this for about 10 years now, 10 or 12 years. Several years ago, we started getting questions from patients, individuals who were in the hospital and used our product in the hospital, loved it, wanted to purchase some. And long story short, it dawned on us that this concept of a single use painless lancet is something that has been utilized in clinical settings for over 30 years now. But the majority of people with diabetes that check their blood sugar on a regular basis in their homes are totally unfamiliar with the concept. And so we really wanted to bring this clinical technology, this superior technology into the homes of millions of people with diabetes all across the country. You know, as you're saying that, I'm thinking about the times, the very few times I've seen that Lancet that you're talking about. And I recall going to Benny's overnight, my son's overnight diabetes camp and seeing a ton of those things, you know, and I'm calling them those things because I'm trying to think they didn't look like the PIP at the time, right? They looked, I don't know, you can probably describe it better in a second, but, you know, they, they looked very different from what we were used to using. And this was before he was using a CGM, so we were using a lot of lancets. And I remember thinking, like, why aren't those easier to come by? Is that the kind of stuff you're talking about? And maybe you can describe what it looked like? Exactly. Yeah, I mean, we've, we've got a lot of competitors. I and mean, it's, it's no secret. There's other single-use lancets out there. But the design process and the things that have been important to many of our competitors are not necessarily the things that are, that are important to us. In a clinical setting, the most important thing is that you get enough blood to perform the test. And the hospitals, blood banks, any other time that you use these single-use products, what they really want to guard against is having to poke someone twice. Some of the ways in which they accomplish this goal is to make the needle as large and as deep as possible to ensure that you get the blood that you need to do the test. So functionally, the, you know, they work very well. You know, most of our competitors' products and, and the ones that are still used in a lot of hospitals, they work very well at getting the blood sample. And in our B2B business, Metacore, we've got one customer who we had to custom develop a, a size of uh, Lancet for that that was the most important thing. And, uh, I'll, I'll just tell you, it's not one that I would recommend using. It's quite painful. Uh, so with PIP, we started to see the, the intersection of blood samples needed for, for blood glucose monitoring getting smaller and smaller and smaller, like 0.6 microliters of blood is what most of them take these days, and realized that you really don't need a very big needle or a very deep needle to accomplish this. And with some additional engineering and technology in the product, we were able to make it completely pain-free and still produce enough blood to perform the, the glucose test. Yeah, you know, it's funny as you're saying that I'm thinking back. We had a friend in the hospital. This has got to be more than 10 years ago, maybe maybe 15, when my son was newer diagnosed. And he was not in the hospital, our friend, for diabetes, but they needed to do blood glucose checks a lot. And he kept calling me and complaining. He's like, I can't believe your toddler has to do this. This is the worst. And I was like, well, what are they using? And he said, they just use this thing. They throw it out every time they use it. It must have been exactly as you're talking about, the larger needle. And we, we snuck him one of Benny's Lancers, which was a finer gauge and a lot more comfortable for him. And I remember bringing it. It's funny. I hadn't thought about this in a long time. Like 15 years ago, sneaking one of these things to my friend in the hospital. Oh, my goodness. Right. So how does PIP work? I know it sounds silly as you're listening to ask how a Lancer and a Lancet works, but it really is different. There's no big device that you put this in, right? Right. There's there's no big device. It's it's all in one. Uh, you simply twist off the cap. After you twist off the cap, you'll you'll see a little white tip inside the device. You apply pressure to your fingertip. I just did one on my finger. <laughs> The needle fires upon activation. You get a nice small blood drop and uh, you don't feel it at all. Uh, we were able to reduce the vibration that occurs inside the device. And so what we determined is that finger stick pain is caused by three things. The gauge of the needle, the thickness of the needle, the sharpness of the needle, and the depth that that needle goes in the, in the finger. But there's actually a fourth 
uh, component, and that is the vibration that's inherent in the device. I'm sure, you know, Benny's had diabetes since the age of two. I would imagine you've used multiple different types of lancing devices. Oh, yeah. Correct? Oh, yeah. And so some are cheap and some are expensive and you've kind of got everything in between. But if you pay attention to, if you can pick up that device and, and shake it and, and hear kind of components rattling around inside the device, that means that the manufacturing of it isn't very tight. It's not very well put together. And that's going to lead to vibration, which will then lead to more pain than you would otherwise get from something that, that's better manufactured. I've heard that too with pump infusion sets. The less the human is involved because right. we tend to, you know, we wiggle, we tend to move a little bit when we insert things. So the less the human is involved, the better. That's really interesting. Absolutely. Or if you get like, I use this analogy of, you know, when you get a flu shot, you know, sometimes you don't feel it at all and other times it hurts, mm -hmm. you know, it, a lot of it has to do with you and how much you move, but it also has to do with the clinician performing the, the shot you know, if they're, if they're nervous or shaking, then you're going to feel that on the injection. And the same thing is happening with a Lancet, just on a much smaller scale, and it's happening much quicker. When we're looking at PIP, there are different colors. These are different types of needles? Correct. So the, the blue needle is our smallest needle, shallowest depth, and generally works for most people. I think about 75 or 80% of our customers all use the, the blue PIP. And it's a 30 gauge by 1.0. The purple is a 30 gauge needle, about 1.6 millimeter depth. It goes a little bit deeper, but honestly, sometimes if you compare the pain level, you might say, or you know how much you feel it, most people can't tell the difference between the two. Uh, and then we've got an, an orange pip, which is a 28 gauge needle, by 1.8 millimeter depth. And that's going to be the, uh, the largest needle that we make. And again, it's... It's still a pretty small needle. It still has the same anti-vibration technology inside. So it, it still is not going to hurt as much as many other Lancets. But we recommend it for, for people that have a little bit thicker skin, uh, maybe callous skin, tougher skin, or people that just would prefer to get a little bit larger blood drop when they check the blood sugar. All right. Well, I got to ask, it's a really cute product. I mean, it's packaged beautifully. It definitely is sleek. But... You know, I'm just thinking, Josh, I got to be honest, you know, Benny used to do at least like 10 finger sticks a day before he got a continuous glucose monitor. And even my husband who lives with type two, he he's doing about a finger stick a day now, I think, because he's in between. He uses um, the Libre and he has not renewed the prescription for that. Benny has used the Dexcom for a long time and my husband uses the Libre. I don't know if this is a business question or a philosophy question, but you know, how are you marketing PIP? How are you talking about PIP in the age of CGM? Right back to my conversation with Josh. But first, Diabetes Connections is brought to you by Afrezza. Now, if you're a regular listener, you've heard me talk about Afrezza, the only ultra-rapid acting inhaled mealtime insulin. But did you know it's both fast in and fast out? Fast in means it can start to control blood sugar in about 12 minutes. Fast out means it leaves your body after one and a half to three hours for the four unit and 12 unit cartridges, respectively. And this gives you the flexibility to take additional doses if needed based on your blood glucose levels after meals. Find out more, see if Afrezza is right for you. Go to diabetes-connections.com and click on the Afrezza logo. Afrezza can cause serious side effects, including sudden lung problems and low potassium, and it's not for patients with chronic lung disease such as asthma or COPD or for patients allergic to insulin. Tell your doctor if you ever smoked, ever had kidney or liver problems, a history of lung cancer, or if you are pregnant or breastfeeding. Most common side effects are low blood sugar, cough, and sore throat. Severe low blood sugar can be fatal. Do not replace long-acting insulin with Afrezza. Afrezza is not for use to treat diabetic ketoacidosis. Please see full prescribing information, including boxed warning, medication guide, and instructions for use on afrezza.com slash safety. Now back to Josh, and I have asked him about heading up a Lancet company in the age of CGMs. Very good question. So with Benny, he used to do about 10 finger sticks a day. About how many does he do now? <laughs> I say this carefully. Zero. Now, he does do finger sticks every once in a blue moon, right, when something's wonky with his Dexcom. And I know people with CGM... He is 18 years old. He is very independent. He and I would manage diabetes very differently. I know many people 
who will double check their CGM with a finger stick or you know use it during that two hour warm up period. I'm not sure Benny's the best test case for what you wanted me to say is all I'm getting at. <laughs> no, no, no that, that's OK. And I think that the range varies widely across sure. the board. And it is an interesting time to launch uh, a land set in the age of CGMs. What's interesting to me is that it's been kind of tucked away and, and not shown to the, the wider population for so many years. But the way I look at it is diabetes is a big problem. You know, it affects about 30 million people nationwide. Many people don't have insurance. Many people can't afford their copay. You know, the percentage of people that are using type ones obviously uh, continues to increase. And I think it's at probably 75, 80 percent at this point. But we're still in a phase for people with type two where a very small percentage of, of people with type two are currently using CGMs. Obviously, as a business, you know, someone that checks their blood sugar 10 times a day and is using PIP lancets for every single test, that's a really good customer for us, you know, because they use a lot of lancets. But that's not necessarily who we had in mind when we designed the product. Because when you're doing that many tests, 10 sticks a day, 15 cents a lancet, what's that, $1.50 a day? So you're talking, you know, 45, 60 bucks a month. I don't know if that map made sense. It was probably <laughs> we'll check it. But who we really designed the product around is the people who are checking their blood sugar or should be checking their blood sugar once or twice or three times a day, but are terrified to do so. About 10% of the American population or of the human population has a needle phobia. They are legitimately terrified of needles. For the other 90%, I'd be hard pressed to find any of them that enjoy the idea of using a needle to do an injection or to check their blood sugar or, or any of the other things that needles are used for. Who we really designed the product around is the individual who has let their diabetes management or their health sort of go by the wayside because they're terrified of this process yeah. of loading a needle, unloading a needle. You asked me earlier about how PIP works. Well, if you you don't change your lancet, and I'm sure there's maybe one or two of you out there listening that, that might not change your lancet on a regular <laughs> basis. But it, it, so if you don't change your lancet, you know, traditional lancers and lancets are extremely easy to use, right? You just hold it up to your finger and push a button. But if you're interested in getting a clean needle every time and, you know, limiting, you know, any potential for infection or, or just want to have a sharp needle every time, it's about a 10 step process to load, unload, cock the device, adjust the depth, perform the finger stick, pull the lancet out, dispose of it in a sharps container. It's, it's, it's a cumbersome process. And with other diabetes educators we talk to, they spend more time talking about how to use a lancing device than anything else in a newly diagnosed patient's meeting, right? They mentioned that it sometimes takes 15 to 20 minutes to explain to the patient how to use a lancing device. Benny is 18 now. He was diagnosed at age two. You guys have had quite some time to, to, to get comfortable with the idea of lancets and needles and checking your blood sugar. And I know it's not something that you look forward to, but, uh, but you've had time to get comfortable with it. Yeah. I guess I would ask you, when Benny was diagnosed at age two, I'd love to hear your perspective on what it was like in that meeting. <laughs> you were talking about needles and lancets and things of that nature. You know, I appreciate that very much, Josh. You know, I, it's hard to remember, obviously. It was a long time ago. There are some things that will stick with you forever, though. I remember thinking there is no way this kid is going to let us poke his fingers and draw blood right? 10 times a day, which is pretty much what they were telling us in the hospital, let alone do injections. We did injections for six months after he was diagnosed before switching to an insulin pump. I had never given an injection in my life. I was terrified they were never going to let us leave the hospital because I would not be able to check blood glucose or <laughs> give injections. And, you know, we got there. But I do remember, you know, you're talking about training people with the, the lancing devices. I, I remember he was in daycare and my husband and I both worked full time and we had lots of, I would say opportunities. We had lots of occasions where we needed a babysitter or to have somebody else take care of him. And Benny was funny because we realized, and we didn't know this until then, we realized while we started finger sticks that he was ambidextrous. So he didn't care which hand we checked as long as he could keep playing. 
But as you say, I mean, it's funny, I'm thinking now about the meter that he carried everywhere for so long and how we were fastidious. We joke now about changing the Lancet. But I, I, I tell you, for the first three or four years, especially when he was a little kid and other people were taking care of him, we were fastidious about changing that Lancet. So it was a multi-step process. And what I, I don't want to make this sound like a big commercial for Pip, but what I hated the most was changing the needle out of the Lansing device. I mean, I just, I was always worried about, you know, sticking myself, sticking somebody else. Would I have to carry the tiny needle back with me? Was there a sharps disposal? I hated changing it just because of that, that inconvenience of it. You know, it's, it's interesting to look back and think about all of that education. But yeah, the big thing we did learn was that he could use either hand. <laughs> That's cool. One funny story. I remember he was, gosh, he had to be around seven or eight because we started using the Dexcom when he was nine. You know, even in the early days of Dexcom, you had to calibrate twice a day. So st- we were still doing a lot of finger sticks. And he had a favorite finger. You know, a lot of people have that favorite finger. And the more you poke the same finger, of course, the more easy it is for scarring to build up and calluses and that sort of thing. And we had to, like, I wouldn't say bribe him, although that's what it was. We had to give him incentives, right? You can't use your pinky for two weeks. You've got to rotate finger sticks. And you know, when you don't use a finger for a long time and then you start again, it hurts more. Right. right. And so I right. could see how he was reluctant to do that. Oh, it's amazing to think about all that stuff we used to have to do. Yeah. Yeah. My point in all that is there's a lot to think about when you're newly diagnosed with diabetes. You know, whether it's you yourself or a loved one or your child or, you know, whoever it may be, there's a lot to think about when you're thinking about insulin levels and blood glucose readings and hypoglycemia and hyperglycemia. And it's just, it's just a lot to think about. What we're trying to do with PIP is make the finger stick aspect of it a little bit easier, you know, and, and we believe that if, if we can make a portion of the process easier for the patients, then it will ultimately help them get a better handle on the disease quicker and they'll really be able to, to live a, a healthier life sooner rather than later. You know, my mom, when she was diagnosed with type two, she had been told for years that she was pre-diabetic, mm. that if you didn't do X, Y, and Z, then you, you know, you may become diabetic. She had also ran in her family. So kind of, you know, the headwinds were working against her there. And then she was diagnosed with diabetes and she, you know, got the meter and got the lancets and all that. But it really wasn't until about probably 15 years later that it finally registered with her that if you don't do the things you're supposed to do to manage this disease, it can have very negative impacts on, on your health. Yeah. And she eventually got there and it's very, it's very well managed now and, and that sort of thing. But a big challenge for her was, was the finger stick, you know, having to pull out the lancet, check your blood sugar a couple of times a day. And yeah, I, mean, I think it's just one of those things where there's still a lot of finger sticks taking place out there. Most people with type two do not have CGMs. Many of them will get CGMs soon. I know Medicare just rolled out their new reimbursement and everything. But finger sticks are unlikely to go away. Mm. And with as big as the problem, it go away, com- and I mean, go away completely. And it, as big as the, of a population is, a, is, is affected by diabetes, I just wanted to have a better option out there. So do you supply to hospitals and things like that? Is, is PIP the same product that is now going to hospitals? Is it separate from the other part of the um, business? We've got two brands underneath the same business, one of which is Medicore. Medicore is uh, the business I started 12 years ago, and uh, we sell Medicore lancets to about 2,500 hospitals nationwide. Mm. The technology inside the device is the exact same. PIF is just our direct-to-consumer brand. We redesigned the product, made it smaller, added some additional sizes. And so, to answer your question, yes and no. It's a slightly <laughs> similar product to about 2,500 hospitals nationwide. And PIP is what we supply to users because it it's smaller, it's easier to carry on the go. And obviously we've been intentional about our branding and trying to make it look friendly and pretty and all this. Well, I, I brought it up because I feel like a lot of people encounter their first finger stick in the hospital. And so if it can be a little less painful, right, there's nothing wrong with that. I know you also offer, you know, other, the meter and pen needles. Yeah, we now offer a more... Uh, complete product offering. We do have pin needles, we do have glucose meters, and 
our whole thought is just making the process simpler uh, and easier to manage for people with diabetes. And so our pin needles are uh, very good, high quality pin needles. We sell them at an affordable price online. They're going to be about half the price of the name brand product. So for people that have out of pockets on their on their deductibles or you know their preferred pin needle is not covered, it you know, becomes a great option. And then we've also got our, our travel safe container, which is a, a nice little on the go sharps container for you to carry with you. That's another thing we, we noticed as part of building out this brand is that traveling with diabetes is not something that pharmacists tend to pay a whole lot of attention to. If you go into a Walgreens or a CVS, you know, the only sharps containers you're going to see are those big, large red ones. Yeah. You know, are impossible to take on the go. And so Travel Safe is a is a small little pocket sized sharps container that you can use for pin needles or landsets or test strips or whatever whatever else. Oh, that's great. We always I mentioned earlier, you know, we we never were sure what to do when we were traveling and I'm clicking on it right now. It looks like I, I it's probably a little bit bigger, but it looks like the thing that holds your AirPods. <laughs> yeah. That's about it's, what it looks like. Yeah, it's about the size of a of an iPhone. You know, maybe a little bit smaller than an iPhone. And yeah, so you drop it in your purse and it's got a integrated uh, little pin needle grabber. So you, you don't even have to touch the pin needle to remove it off the tip of the pin. We're just trying to come up with additional ways as we as we grow on making life with diabetes a little bit simpler to, to manage. How's your mom doing? Oh, she's doing great. She's got it well under control at this point. And um, yeah, she's doing great. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. You've been in this business, as you said, a long time. Have you learned anything that has kind of surprised you about the way people kind of interact? I mean, I know it sounds silly, but how they interact with their lancets. I mean, diabetes is so personal. These things really become part, not of our bodies, but, you know, such a part of our our everyday lives. I think with PIP, this may not be exactly what you were asking, but the biggest challenge that we've had with PIP and the biggest hurdle to, to getting the product out there is the archaic and bureaucratic uh, distribution models of medical devices mm. to individuals, not just in the U.S., but but in the world. You know, we are actively pursuing all of the um, pharmacy wholesaling companies. So in order to get your product on a shelf at a pharmacy, you have to go through a pharmacy wholesaler. But pharmacy wholesalers are only going to stock your product if there's demand for your product. It's a chicken or egg scenario. Right. You need to generate the demand but the primary channel by which the demand exists for your product is a channel in which you can't sell in until you generate the demand. Did you follow all that? I sure did. It, it, it makes perfect nonsense. <laughs> yeah, perfect nonsense. That's a good way to put it. What's challenging is if, if an individual walks into a pharmacy and looks at what lancets they have available in the pharmacy, they're not going to see PIP. Yeah. They're going to see about four or five different variations of the exact same thing. One's going to cost $15, one's going to cost $10, and another box is going to cost $5. That would be the store brand. Mm-hmm. We're really having to re-educate people what a Lancet even is. When we work with various marketing agencies or marketing teams, if an individual goes online and searches for a Lancet, they have a visual in their head of what they're looking for. Typically, it's not PIP, unless they've tried PIP. We're really seeking the support of the clinical community, of the pharmacy community, endocrinologists, educators, parents, all of our current customers to just help us get the word out and share about about this product. Well, Josh, thank you so much for joining me. Thanks for being so open and honest about the challenges and the cool stuff behind this company. I appreciate you spending some time with us. Thanks, Stacey. Thanks for having me and great time well spent. You're listening to Diabetes Connections with Stacy Sims. More information about PIP, like I said at the beginning, you can see the photos in the show notes, lots of links there and more information. Looking ahead a little bit to summer, I mean, the weather, at least here where I am in Charlotte, is it's hot as summer, but let, let's talk summer plans and camp and all that kind of stuff in just a moment. But first, Diabetes Connections is brought to you by Dexcom. And one of the things we love the most about the Dexcom G6 is that it helped Benny become more independent but maybe not in the way you think. I mean, remote monitoring using the Dexcom share and follow functions let us feel more confident, 
letting him do more away from home when he was younger, right, with friends or at camp. But just the design change of the G6 about four years ago meant Benny could use one hand to insert the sensor. He was 14 at the time, and he really did not want our help anymore. And it was perfect timing. Dexcom G7 is even more simple to use and gives effortless diabetes management that fits into your lifestyle without the disruptions. Ease of use helps everybody, and I'm so grateful that Dexcom's product designers kept that in mind with the G7. Learn more, go to diabetes-connections.com and click on the Dexcom logo. You've heard me talk about camp quite a bit if you are a longtime listener. We've got tons and tons of episodes about it. I have a couple of chapters in my book about it. I'm a big fan of camp. Benny has gone to diabetes camp it's almost since he had diabetes. We're very fortunate here. We have a, a little camp. It's like a three-day weekend day camp for very little kids. I think they take them as young as four. And then when they're eight, they go to sleepaway camp for a week. Benny has also gone to non-diabetes sleepaway camp every summer since he was eight. He did it for two weeks when he was eight and a month since he was nine. Last summer, he was there for eight weeks as a CIT. And I say it like that because, I mean, sure, he's away for that time period and I miss him, but also we don't remote monitor when he's away like that. So yeah, that's really hard for me, but he does great. There's a lot of reasoning behind that. I've explained it before and I'm, I'm happy to explain it again sometime in the future. But all of this to say, this summer, he is going to be a lifeguard at this camp. He will be gone for nine weeks because they have to have a staff week first. I cannot believe this kid. He's going to college in the fall and he's already he's leaving me for nine weeks this summer. But all of our camp experience, I think, and all the mistakes that we've made and all the stuff we learned, maybe can help you. I am helping out with a camp webinar with Anna Sabino from Finding Smiles Coaching. I will put all the information in the show notes. Uh, you may have gotten an email already. I'm going to send out one soon. It is May 31st at 1 p.m. If you register for the webinar, we are going to record it. You'll get the link, but please come. These are fun webinars. We love doing this. We have a good time. We laugh and we take your questions. Camp can make people nervous, right? Especially if your child has never been diabetes or not. I grew up going to summer camp, so it was no big deal really for me. My kids were excited to go. But, you know, it's a, it's a nerve-wracking time, I think, more for the parents in a lot of cases. So we're going to talk diabetes camp. We're going to talk regular camp, all sorts of good stuff. The 31st of May, that's a Wednesday at 1 o'clock. Register and get the recording, but come and join us live. We'll have a good time. Thank you, as always, to my editor, John Buchanan from Audio Editing Solutions. Thank you so much for listening. I'm Stacey Sims. I'll see you back here soon. Until then, be kind to yourself. Diabetes Connections is a production of Stacey Sims Media. All rights reserved, all wrongs avenged.